Hello, Thermodynamics Part 1, Unit, Quiz, and Test Review. I have a copy of the test right in front of me, and I will also be including some extra credit as we go on, and you can tweet me, first one to tweet me, or first three to tweet me, or the best to tweet me, or whatever the case may be. Right, so make sure you have some paper, pencil, take some good notes, and let's begin. First of all, the, the quiz is on te uh, temperature, heat, thermal expansion, three kinds of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. So the first thing you want to really look at is temperature. And what is temperature based on? Well, it's based on collisions kinetic energy. Well, it starts with kinetic energy, and then kinetic energy leads to movement, and movement leads to collisions. Collisions lead to kinetic energy, I'm sorry, um, friction. Friction leads to heat, and then the heat is transferred. Remember, <clears throat> internal energy and heat are different. Heat is the manifestation of internal energy. When a substance loses internal energy, it converts it to heat and then it's lost. So it's actually the heat that flows. So you can say that anything such as collisions, energy in the substance, etc., uh, is going to be is going to be temperature. However, the question to you is, what is temperature mostly related to? What is temperature mostly related to? Okay, that's a very, very important question. You want to make sure that you know that. What is it mostly related to? Right. And the temperature scales. We have three major temperature scales. We have Celsius, we have Kelvin, and we have Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit has more gradations between freezing and boiling. For instance, there are 180 between 32 and 212. It is a more precise scale. The Celsius gradation is a larger gradation, nine-fifths larger than the Fahrenheit scale. We want to know about heat. What is, what is heat specifically? I will ask the question. Heat is what? What is it? Internal energy. Remember that internal energy is the sum of all energies. What do we measure heat in? We measure heat in, in calories, kilocalories. Uh, however, can you measure heat in joules? Well, the answer is yes, because it's 4.18 joules per calorie. It's approximately a quarter of a calorie is what a joule is. Joules are mechanical energy. However, you can convert between mechanical energy and heat energy because it's all energy. So heat can be measured in kilocalories, kilojoules, joules, calories, uh, any of those it can be measured in. Right. Now, <clears throat> you, you know that a dietary calorie is, 2, 000, is 1,000 scientific calories. But how do they, how do they, how do they measure the dietary uh, caloric content of food? Well, they burn it in a bomb calorimeter. The bomb calorimeter contains a chamber and water is heated. They can measure the change in temperature of the water. We know that water will absorb energy at a rate of one calorie per gram degree Celsius. And so if we know how much, uh, how much water we have, the mass of water, we know the temperature change and we know the specific heat capacity, we can determine the heat. Now that we know the heat, we can determine the number of calories, the number of kilocalories, and then we can we know per gram or per serving how much heat content, dietary heat content, is in the food. Now, 
what is the specific heat capacity of a substance? Now that's going to be very, very, very important in our discussion. First of all, specific heat capacity is the relative ability of a substance to store energy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a physical uh, property, an intensive physical property, which denotes the storage of energy. <clears throat> Specifically, it's the amount of energy needed to raise a given mass of a substance, uh, one degree Celsius, one degree Fahrenheit, one degree, one degree units. Normally, it's calories per gram degree Celsius. We, of course, would use kilocalories. We would use kilograms. We would use degree Celsius. Uh, if, I, if water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, it would be 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram degree Celsius. It would be 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, same thing, one Kelvin degree is the same as one uh, Celsius degree. Uh, let's see, we, if we say that it is uh, uh, one calorie per gram degree Celsius, it's one kilocalorie per kilogram degree Celsius, one kilocalorie per kilogram Kelvin, etc. So it, it, you, can, you, can, uh, you can denote the specific heat capacity as long as it is a heat over a mass times temperature. So it can be, it can be calorie, joule, kilojoule, kilocalorie over gram, kilogram, decigram, centigram, Celsius, Fahrenheit, Kelvin, whatever the case may be. Just make sure you know what you're calculating. And if you are calculating kilograms, kilojoules, degrees Celsius, then your mass and temperature should be corresponding. Uh, now you want to also know what relative specific heat capacities, for instance, water is very high, sand is very low, iron is very low, any metal is generally very low, water is strangely high. You're going to have an equation sheet that you can actually look at to help you with that. You want to know <clears throat> how, A, water does not conduct heat. That's given. Uh, can it heat up? Sure, it can heat up. It's a poor conductor of heat. It's not a, a, a nil conductor of heat. Uh, water, however, pure H2O, does not conduct electricity. That's kind of interesting. Remember I said that a metal... If, if it can conduct electricity, it's generally a good uh, heat conductor. Well, water does not conduct electricity. You may be confusing salts that are dissolved in the water that can conduct electricity, but water in and by itself does not conduct electricity. It can conduct heat, it can, but it's very, very poor, very poor. Uh, it also has a very high specific heat capacity. So... Those two properties give it uh, a very, very uh, interesting set of properties relative to weather around the globe. Uh, why is the middle of a continent hot, so hot in the summer and so cold in the winter, yet Hawaii is 72 degrees essentially night and day all year round? Uh, Iceland is uh, up above or just at the Arctic Circle, just borders on it, yet there's very little snow, if any snow there. Uh, the Orkney Islands, very in north, off the north coast of Scotland, uh, when I was there in July and August of 86, uh, it was cold at night. Matter of fact, Skye, which is one of the Hebrides, the Inner Hebrides in uh, northern Scotland, northwestern Scotland, uh, it went down below freezing at night, and this was July, uh, late July. Matter of fact, the bed and breakfast had uh, electric blankets uh, for you to use because it was so cold and they didn't have a lot of blankets there. They used electric blankets. So 
the water properties will have tremendous impact on, uh, on uh, global weather. So are you going to have the largest extremes in temperature in the middle of continents or in islands? Uh, we talked about sand. You know, did you ever go down to the beach, say in Belmar or Allenhurst, wherever, and you walk on the sand in midday? Uh, it's literally like walking on hot coals. Utterly, absolutely, positively, unbelievably hot. Yet, you know, the sun, the sun doesn't even set. Uh, it becomes, uh, you know, near setting late in the day, like uh, 3 or 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and the sand cools off, and it's fine to walk on. It's not a problem. That's because sand has an approximate specific heat capacity of about 0.8 joules per gram degree Celsius, and water is 4.18. So uh, it's about, gosh, I don't know, 20% of that of uh, water. So it's uh, it loses heat very quickly. Um, you want to know, you want to look back on the ring, uh, heating the ring experiment. That's going to be very important. Uh, <clears throat> uh, wrapping ice, wrapping pipes that may burst. You want to look at that. Uh, what is going to, um, what is going to, uh, what substance is going to expand when it gets colder, uh, water, of course, uh, it it contracts, going from like say, you know, 100 degrees of water, uh, non you know, non boiling water, 100 degrees, and then it is going to contract, 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 down to four four degrees, and then between four degrees and zero, it's going to expand. What expands more, uh, actually? Now that you mention it, uh, solids, liquids, or gases, gases will uh, gases will expand tremendously. Uh, a bimetallic strip. Why do they curl up? And what is the relationship between a bimetallic strip and a thermostat? Uh, your first, your first. Uh, your first extra credit will be what are the various bimetal metallic strips made of in various thermostats. That's a good one. I like that. Uh, bimetallic strips. Fish live uh, year round in ponds that freeze over. Uh, why is that? Why can fish? live in ponds and lakes that freeze over. Why is that? Uh, so, uh, also, also, what was, this is extra credit, in the year 1066, when, uh, when, uh, when William the Conqueror invaded southeastern England, what was the temperature at the bottom of Lake Superior when William the Conqueror in 1066 invaded Southeast England, fought Harold at the Battle of Hastings? What was the temperature of the bottom of Lake Superior? That's extra credit. Make sure you reference William the Conqueror when emailing me or tweeting me that answer. Uh, also, the we talked about Fahrenheit scales, and Fahrenheit was like 180 degrees between between 32 and 212, and we talked about the um, derivation of the formula that converts. Celsius into Fahrenheit. What is how many how many gradations are there between zero and a hundred for between boiling and 
freezing for Celsius. I think I just told you 100. It's 180 between boiling and freezing for Fahrenheit. What about boiling and freezing on the Kelvin scale? How many gradations are there? Hmm, interesting. Uh, now, remember towards the end of, remember towards the end of the chapter 21 problems, I had three or four rather difficult problems on when you, when you mixed, uh, like say 70 degree water with 40 degree water and you'll get water at what temperature? Okay, remember those problems? Well, you're going to have to do two or three of those problems. So that's going to be important for you to look at. Look at the problems at the end of that, uh, that uh, video, the Chapter 21 problems where I uh, looked at water and the specific heat capacities could, would cancel out. So look at those problems. Matter of fact, maybe I'll do a specific practice video uh, with those in it. Okay? All right, let's see. Um, so you also want to be able to do problems where you have Q equals M delta T C. Uh, you want to talk about, now we want to talk about heat transfer, right? Heat transfer, there's three kinds of heat transfer. There's conduction, where I actually touch it. Take your finger and touch your face and pretend your finger is a hot match. Ah, it hurts. Okay, that's because, that's, go, that's by conduction. That's by conduction. Now, uh, you want to, you want to, in your house, where you are, in your, go down to the first floor and, and, and get on a chair and feel the air by the uh, ceiling and then feel the air by the floor and if you notice a difference in temperature there's something wrong you should put a fan on uh, to mix up the air because what you need to do is you have to keep that air flowing that you need to be that that convection now convection could be forced using a fan but basically convection is this I, I pump hot air by the floor. The hot air rises. As it rises, it gives off its heat and falls back to the floor. It's heated again at the floor level, and it rises, and you create this circular, this circular uh, band of hot and cold air. And it's kind of like a, well, where, what's the, I mean, what starts this? Something has to start it. Well, you, in other words, you need to put energy in somewhere. It's, it's not self-sustaining. So what you have to do is you have to heat the floor. That's where your energy is going in, to heat the floor. The air rises and then cools off, and you, that's when you develop this, this circulation. For instance, the, uh, <clears throat> this is really cool. The uh, Atlantic Ocean, you have this conveyor system where... You have this enormous, enormous river. I mean, the size of hundreds of so times the size of the Mississippi River, uh, full of warm air going north. Uh, you can call it the Gulf Stream if you like. And oh, that's a good word for it, the Gulf Stream. And the uh, Gulf Stream is actually one of several. But anyway, so it goes north, and it cools off. So it's floating on top because it's warm water, right? And then it falls, it cools off and falls to the bottom and goes back south and then picks up more warm air, more warm water, more, sorry, more warm water. It picks up more heat and then it goes north. And this, this, uh, this helps keep our planet at a, at a pretty even temperature. If we didn't have that uh, North Atlantic conveyance, North Atlantic conveyor belt of water, the, the, the earth would be a giant snowball. It would be amazing. We'd go into this intense, um, intense uh, 
uh, what's the word, uh, intense uh, uh, ice age. Matter of fact, when, the, when all of the uh, uh, icebergs melted, and, or icebergs, the ice sheet, uh, North, the great North Atlantic ice sheet, North, uh, North American ice sheet, when that melted, that dumped, that, that made this giant lake the size of Canada, and that broke, that, that lake broke, and it all poured into the North Atlantic, and, and it, it, it literally desalinated the North Atlantic and created a great disruption in the densities of the water in the North Atlantic. And as a result, it, you stopped this North Atlantic conveyance, and it ceased to exist or slow down very dramatically, and you ended up with this this in incredible new ice age after just a few years. It was very, very quick. So when, when you think of convection, don't just think of air. Think of all fluids. Uh, extra credit on uh, email me, tdarc17 at gmail.com, an original one paragraph description of the failure of the of the North Atlantic water conveyance which led to a great ice age okay that's another extra credit and that's to be emailed to me at tdarcy17 at gmail.com now you have to distinguish what a good conductor is from a bad conductor a good conductor can conduct electricity and it will conduct heat so when you think of a good conductor think of a good conductor of of electrons as well so a good conductor of electrons, let's see, copper, okay, silver, uh, any metal, uh, zinc, aluminum. But the best, you know, there's another extra credit for you. Top five, top five, one, two, three, four, five, top five best conductors of electricity top five best conductors of electricity okay uh, why doesn't plastic conduct heat well you could say it's a terrible electrical conductor and you would be absolutely correct so uh, if it's a poor conductor does that make it a good insulator hmm interesting you're absolutely right it's an excellent insulator Air is a bad conductor. Up, oh, good insulator. Water is a bad conductor. Up, oh, good insulator. So, you want to talk about conduction, and you want to talk about convection. Now, uh, we talked about radiation at great length in class. Now, radiation is not the heating of the Earth through sunlight. The, the heating of the earth using sunlight is radiation. The process by which short waves that come through the atmosphere, the atmosphere is transparent to short waves, i.e. light, Roy G. Biv, uh, ultraviolet lights as well, shorter waves, are, can, are, are absorbed by material and then re-radiated, you hear what I just said, re-radiated to shorter waves uh, in the form of infrared. So uh, when, you, when you heat, when you transfer energy, <clears throat> uh, you can transfer it by conduction, you can transfer it by convection, changes in density of a fluid, or you can do it by radiation. Radiation can be radio waves. It can be, so if you put on a radio, you're transferring energies, that's radio waves. Visible rays, uh, if, you're, if you're feeling hot from a fireplace, uh, that's radiation, is, uh, you know, that's a form of radiation, infrared radiation. So the process by which the short wave visible waves are converted to long, uh, through the transparency of the atmosphere 
allows short waves in, the Earth converts those short waves to uh, longer waves, re-radiates it. The atmosphere is not transparent to the infrared waves, and they bounce back to the Earth. That process is called global warming. That is not called radiation. So there's two types of radiation there. There's the visible light radiation, and then there's also the infrared radiation. Did you hear what I said? The, the Earth re-radiates uh, the, the, uh, the energy that it absorbed from visible light as infrared radiation. Okay, let's see. Um, we, this is something that's very important. Remember, and we live at the Jersey Shore, so this is something that you should know. Uh, why are, what are sea breezes and what are land breezes and how do they occur at night and day? Land breezes and sea breezes occur because of what reason? Hmm. Very, very interesting. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, what are what are um, uh, convection? Convection is a property of gases or liquids, or possibly fluids. And what is a fluid? What is a gas? What is a liquid? Anything that flows. So you want to know that convection is basically anything that can move. A solid is not going to move. Uh, a solid will do conduction, but fluids are involved with convection. Let's see. Um, hot coffee, white coffee. Uh, hot black coffee, hot white coffee. Um, black thermos, uh, silver thermos. Which one's going to cool off faster? The black coffee will cool off quicker than the white coffee. The black thermos will cool off quicker than the aluminum, the shiny, the shiny, uh, the shiny uh, thermos. Uh, if it's a good reflector, it's a poor emitter of heat. If it's a good absorber of heat, it's a good emitter of heat. Okay. Uh, what else? So you want to know poor absorber of radiation, good emitter of radiation, uh, poor emitter of radiation, good absorber of radiation. You want to know what a good reflector is, good reflector, poor emitter. Uh, so you want to know absorbing, you want to talk about emitting, and you want to talk about reflecting. So those are important. Um, now, I'm going to do this experiment in class where I take a piece of tissue paper or toilet paper or, and I wrap it around a piece of metal and I light it and it doesn't burn. Well, why does it, or it burns very slowly or poorly. Why doesn't it burn? Hmm. Why doesn't it burn? Well, because the metal, the metal is conducting the heat away from the paper. Very simple. Excellent. So that's going to be a very, very important experiment that we're going to do. Um, light colored clothing. Why, why do they help keep you cool in warm weather? Uh, why do they keep you cool in warm weather? Uh, that's an interesting thing to do. Why would they keep you cool? Why would they keep you warm in northern climates. Why is a polar bear white? Interesting. Shouldn't a polar bear be black? Shouldn't an arctic fox be black? Why, are they, why is everything white up there? That's weird, huh? And also, is snow a good insulator? And if it is, why is snow a good insulator? Okay. A, a snow is a good insulator for one reason. That's another tweet. Snow is a good insulator because of what? Tweet me the right answer. Okay. Um, global warming, greenhouse effect. Uh, when we come back after break, 
we will see a movie from called The Inconvenient Truth, Al Gore's uh, movie, Inconvenient Truth. And uh, it's a great movie, and uh, it's a wonderful movie. It's a very accurate movie, uh, despite some political maneuvering. Uh, it's a very, very factual. And it talks about greenhouse, uh, greenhouse effect, uh, global warming, uh, et cetera, and, and why that occurs. But you're going to have to know for the test why that. And uh, a florist greenhouse. Remember we talked about in one of the videos, uh, when I was a kid, uh, there was a greenhouse that I used to pass by all the time uh, walking around the neighborhood and uh, in Middletown. And he used to, he used to take uh, glass wax, and your parents or grandparents might remember this kind of glass wax that you, you put on the glass, and you let it dry, and it forms this really thin white uh, film on the glass. And then you take a dry rag, you know, it's come, it goes on wet. It's kind of disgusting. You put it on with a rag, and it's wet. And then you wipe it off when it dries, and the the, the windows are brilliantly uh, clear and excellent, no streaking, nothing, none of that, because it, you take it off and it's dry, it's not wet, so when you take it off, it takes off all the grime and everything, it's kind of cool. And what they do is, they don't, they, they, they put that on in the late spring, they put that on the outside of their greenhouse. And then in the uh, fall, when it starts to get cold, they, they take and they wipe it off. And it serves two purposes. One, in the summer, it reflects a lot of the rays. But two, uh, it cleans the glass so that the sun can get through in the winter and warm the interior of the greenhouse more readily. So remember the greenhouse... Uh, florists greenhouse and number one how that works and and they, they're not I think they said in the book they whitewash the green no, they don't whitewash it they put in this uh, this glass wax well it, that's what they used to do anyway when I was a kid um, how does the greenhouse work the atmosphere is transparent to short waves ie ultraviolet and visible light all that is converted to heat by organisms and, and land and plants and everything in a variety of different ways. And then it's re-radiated as sh longer waves, infrared waves. Um, suppose uh, you want to save, uh, you want to save energy. How would you do that? What are, what are the... F what are some ways to save energy? Uh, should you turn your thermostat down uh, when you leave your house in the winter? Uh, and that actually saves a lot of energy. Making sure you're, you know, if your if your parents are going to get um, if your parents are going to get uh, new uh, roof tiles, tell them to look into white tiles. It's going to save them a tremendous amount of energy. Uh, if they're going to get new siding, get a light-colored siding, that also will save them tremendous money. Uh, <clears throat> if they're going to do uh, one thing, they should get like a couple of windows a year and make sure their houses house is completely uh, uh, updated with windows. They can uh, insulate the attic uh, with uh, an exhaust system that's also really good uh, fire walkers uh, remember we talked about fire walkers how how do they, how can they do that is it mind over matter is it uh, uh, something else involved well it's water sweaty feet and wood is a lousy conductor of energy woods a lousy conductor of energy and so is water wet feet and poor Poor water. If they, it was, uh, it was red hot iron filings. I wouldn't suggest uh, walking over those. But as long as the coals are from from wood, and you have sweaty feet, uh, perfect. 
and remember what the night breeze is. What what's a night at what's a night breeze and what's a day breeze? What's a land breeze and what's a sea breeze? How does it occur? And you should really know that being at the Jersey Shore. And um, Don't forget your white and black pots, uh, thermoses, etc. This was uh, an exciting way to review. I hope that you uh, learned something and have a great day. Good luck on your quiz and your test. All the best. Hope you're enjoying your vacation and goodbye.